Hello and welcome to AP Human Geography. We're taking a look at Chapter 7, Key Issue 3, based off of the Cultural Landscape Textbook, 11th edition by James Rubenstein. I'm your host, Andrew Patterson, and we're taking a look at why do conflicts arise among ethnicities. So we need to make sure we define things correctly here, because these can get confusing. When we talk about a nationality, we're thinking of United States, China, Russia, England, Mexico. The nationality is people sharing legal attachment and personal allegiance to a country, right? Whereas ethnicity would be people sharing the same cultural traditions from a particular hearth or location. So when we're thinking about ethnicity, when we think about things in this country, we might think of um, Hispanic or Chinese or um, Asian American or African American. These are uh, cultural traditions that hold people together. Race would be different, where we're looking at people sharing the same biological ancestor. Um, so we might say someone who is black or white. Now nationality can be similar to ethnicity as far as how we might identify or define uh, these demographics. But um, nationality, you're going to have same shared cultural values a lot of the times. And ethnicity, that's, that's one of the main things that helps define it. So these two things can be a little blurred. But let's see if we can clear some of that up. Ethnicity, we are looking at your background of religion, language, material culture. Whereas nationality, there are some things that can help define you, such as voting, your passport, and civic duties. Like in the United States, we identify as being from the United States because we're able to vote in this country. We carry a U.S. passport. And there are certain civic, civic duties that we might have to do, such as um, going to, through the educational system. So we look at this picture over here, and we see that perhaps there might be some people of uh, Hispanic uh, ethnicity, but their nationality is going to be from the United States. All right, so look, let's look at some examples here. When we examine the United States, we know that our nationality is that we are U.S. citizens. We're citizens of the United States of America. But we might have lots of different ethnicities. We might be African American, Hispanic American, Chinese, or Polish, right? As far as race, we've already talked about this. Could be black, white, or many other colors. But when we look at the United Kingdom, it gets a little bit more complicated, especially when we're examining this graphic over here. And we look at um, the United Kingdom, and we're like, is that one country? Is it multiple countries? Or what's going on there? Well, let's dig in. So within the United Kingdom, we've got these four colored countries, excuse me, we've got these four colored areas here, which are all part of one country, which is called the United Kingdom. Okay, so we've got the English ethnicities, which is here in England, and our capital city is London, who are descendants of the Germanic tribes. We've got the Welsh in this red area here, which is in Wales, which were Celts. They conquered, they were conquered by England in 1282. Up north here, we've got Scotland, where you have the ethnicity of the Scots, where they were Celts. Um, they merged with England in 1603 when King James VI took over both countries. And when he became king, he claimed both countries. And then in Northern Ireland, our ethnicity is the Irish, who were Celts that became independent in the 20th century because we, let, we had a lot of turmoil going on between the country of the Republic of Ireland and England, okay? So within the United Kingdom, you have these four different ethnicities. When we're talking about this entire area in general, we've got two countries. We have the United Kingdom, which is the four areas we already talked about. Um, and then we've got the Republic of Ireland, which is, which is down here. So we've got ethnicities and we've got nationalities. Could be a bit confusing there, so let's try to keep that straight. Oh. One more thing there. So let's take a look at some examples here. When we think about golf, we might be thinking of Rory McIlroy, who is Irish Catholic in ethnicity, but he's from the United Kingdom. So we try to define people based on their nationalities. We try to base them off their, their ethnicities. Well, Irish Catholic, where would you fit that in? Would that be Northern or um, Southern I Ireland? And well, actually, that's where you might think it's from, but no, he's from more of the United Kingdom. Whereas Tiger Woods, it's clear he's from the United States, but what is his ethnicity? Is he African, Native American, Chinese, Thai, or Dutch? Because he's, he's got all of that background. So it becomes difficult to clarify that. Nationalism. This is our spirit of pride. It's what makes us devoted to a certain country above all others. 
And certain countries create, you know, all countries create this feeling of nationalism through different things like flags, standing to say the pledge, patriotic songs. This is what we're calling a, a, centripetal, a centripetal force, where it's an attitude that unifies a people. Centripetal meaning something that centers you around a, a, a core in the middle, centripetal. Centrifugal uh, would be the opposite, where it's pushing uh, people or forces away. But if you look here, of course, we feel very patriotic with the United States flag. And I want to be honest with you, I did not even know that the flag of Russia looked like this currently. I, because I grew up through the 80s and, and the, the years of the communist red scare in the United States, I was taught to fear this flag right here with the hammer and sickle of the Soviet Union, the former communist states there. Um, so this is the current Russian flag. Let's look at some specific examples where we're getting some conflict between ethnicities. So we're here in the continent of Asia and we're zooming into Lebanon. In 1943, Lebanon gains independence. We've got um, the idea that the religious factions are supposed to be represented equally within the government, but that doesn't turn out to be quite true because historically you had Christians who um, had the majority, but they lost their power over time and Muslims gained strength. So you have this vying for power between groups, and uh, in 1975, a civil war erupts, and it brings big changes to social and economic conditions. Because each group formed its own army, and they fought, and they vied for territory, and it was a huge conflict. So eventually, you had the United States and Syria over here that's adjacent to Lebanon. They come in, and they try to send in troops to restore the peace, but... Um, they had to pull out eventually too, and it still remains a conflicted uh, area of turmoil that doesn't necessarily flare up all the time, but um, you definitely have tensions currently. Sri Lanka, all right, so we zoom into where Sri Lanka is here on the southern tip of India, right there at the southern, directly southern portion of Asia, and there has been fighting since 1983 between the Sinhalese and the Tamils. You can see how we're divided there. So the Sinhalese are um, the Buddhist religion. They're the larger, the larger population, and they dominate the government and commerce. Whereas the Tamils or the Hindu, they feel underrepresented. Underrepresented. So of course, whenever you have a group that feels underrepresented, and but it's a large enough group, you're going to have turmoil, and that's the situation going on between these two ethnicities in Sri Lanka. And then we come to India. This is one of my favorite stories, and, and Gandhi is one of my um, favorite historical figures. So we've got the situation where there's two different ethnicities. There's more than that, but there's two in, in India. Uh, and in the 1800s, when Britain, the empire, comes and takes over India, they maintain some control because they have their military strength and they maintain order because of that. But we've really got this struggle between the British, the Muslim, and the Hindu. And Gandhi, if you don't know, we're going to study this extensively later on in our year, he works to end the British rule of uh, the country. And he wants to unite everyone in all of these ethnicities, and he really came a long way. And the cool thing about Gandhi is, is he forced out the British Empire uh, by nonviolent means. So in 1947, the British ends its colonial rule of the Indian subcontinent, which is what we're looking at here, India. And Gandhi was really happy because it looked like they were going to gain their independence and everyone was going to live together forever in peace. But it didn't happen because they had this ethnic conflict. What they ended up having to create was the separate India here in the mainland. And that was the uh, Hindu religion. And then we had two separate areas of Pakistan created where they were Muslim. So we have this western Pakistan and what was over here eastern Pakistan. But... There's, there was still conflict among ethnicities, and there was too much separation between these Muslim uh, Pakistani regions. So they separated again, and Bangladesh became what had previously been East Pakistan. Um, during this time, there was, of course, large issues with the border areas around here, um, and they still to this day have conflict. Let's look at some more examples here. Have you heard about the Kurds? Well, it's a group that uh, is an ethnicity, that, but they don't have 
any state or nationality to call their own because they have, don't have a designated area. So we're looking at the Caucasus Mountains here, and it's in the area of Syria, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, and southern um, says USSR over here, but this is southern Russia, what used to be the former Soviet Union. But we're looking at the Caucasus Mountains over here, and this is the area where the Kurds are. So what we've got is a group of Sunni Muslims who are wanting to establish a nationality, a recognized political border for themselves. And they're trying to do that in these countries like Turkey and Iraq and Iran, and it's just never happening. And whenever they get the chance, they vie for power in these areas. But there's always regulations and, and governmental policies and physical conflict that occurs to keep them being an ethnicity that doesn't have their own state. Other examples of uh, ethnicities, we've got uh, Iraq, and we've got the competition between the... Arab Muslims and the Kurdish people here. And we had a lot going on in Iraq back in the 80s and 90s when the United States went in for various reasons. But the United States goes into Iraq and they establish um, the semblance of a democratic government. But it really didn't last um, because there wasn't much support for it. The Arabs didn't appreciate it. Um, the, Kurds, the Kurds did because they felt like they were, the United States was helping to establish their own national, politically recognized state, but there was too much turmoil between those three ethnicities, and it's really unstable to this day. Iran. We've got, um, historically, the Persians here, which follow the Shiite Muslim tradition, and there's so many other ethnicities within this region, but the dominant one is going to be uh, the Shiite Muslims, or what's recognized as the Persians. Afghanistan, another area with lots of conflict between ethnicities. One of the major ethnicities that stood out was the Taliban, and we know that the United States came into conflict with them back in 2001 when um, we had the scenario that was stated as the Taliban attackers coming in and destroying the World Trade Center. So previous to that, we had uh, the Soviet Union, or the Russians, going into Afghanistan to deal with the ethnicities for various reasons. And as you know, that area is just devastated by conflict between the two major superpowers of Russia and the United States and all of these warring ethnicities. And we finish it up with Pakistan, where Punjabi is the prevalent ethnicity, and these are Shiite Muslims. But you see, when you line all these up together uh, with people who are so passionate about their ethnicities and the influence of outside forces such as England, the United States, and Russia, we're going to have continued conflict, and there's not much room for peace because everybody's always vying for power and control of land and their religious doctrine. So that's a look at Chapter 7, Key Issue 3. I'm Andrew Patterson. I'm at Coppell High School. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email there, and I appreciate you listening. Take a look at our sources and some of our media that we've pulled from for our graphics, and I will talk to you in the next Key Issue.